Hello, so today I'm back with a tutorial uh, that's special to me and I'm sure it's going to be useful for a lot of people and it's about generating gyro geometries using MATLAB script. Um, maybe some of you are familiar with geometry, I guess people who searched and found this video are familiar with it and they're looking for some ways to generate the shape. The advantage of using MATLAB is that you can manipulate the parametric equation uh, much more flexibly. You can adjust the mesh quality, mesh density, and I will also show a bit later how you can um, improve the mesh quality using MeshLab software and how you can convert this STL you generate at the end of this from MATLAB. Uh, you can, after uh, cleaning it up in MeshLab, reducing the mesh density in MeshLab, you can later convert it to a solid using, for example, FreeCAD. You could also do the same on Fusion 360, convert STL to solid or also on some um, plugin for Abacus. I will focus on um, mostly MATLAB and briefly at the end show the steps in MeshLab and the steps in FreeCAD. So let's just start. Um, this is basically the equation for a gyroid. Um, it is a very simple parametric equation, sine x cosine y, sine y cosine z, sine z cosine x equals zero. Uh, or this same equation could be set to a constant value, so equal or equal t. If it's equal zero, you'll get a central surface uh, that passes through the center of the faces of the cube. And if you start to adjust the constants, you start to shift this surface away from the central line or the central cu uh, sur uh, cube surface. Now, uh, what you need to do is to implement this equation in MATLAB. I have already a script where I did so and I can generate the jars I need. Uh, so we switch to MATLAB software. And in MATLAB, uh, I'm starting the code by first cleaning out every past code or previously generated uh, mesh or, or whatever grid. And you start with uh, defining the size of the cube in which this jar rod is generated. In this case, I'm making cubes of size 20. So these are not like centimeter, millimeter. Um, they're not much unit dependent values. They're just absolute, just dimensional values. Uh, you can always rescale to any size you need later on. Um, but this becomes important later if you're generating multiple gyros together. And this is directly related to the definition. Definition is the quality of the surface of the gyroid. So if you use a very low definition value, you have, let's say, very large surface triangles. And if you use a higher definition value, then you increase the quality of the surface of the generated gyroids. I will generate uh, with low definition to show you how bad it can get and with high definition to show you how good it can be. Now the rest, I'm gonna not gonna go into all details of small things. So there's a value that's automatically calculated and this is one you should not change. So this is just a calculation. The gyroid equation is trigonometric. So it's based on cosine, cosine. And because this is a periodic body, so the, the width of periodicity is minus pi and plus pi. So this is a pi based uh, geometry. So you need to convert this pi based periodicity into a linear value that's why there's this equation where you divide by pi so this is just to convert um, to a much more linear scale and the other values are also calculated automatically from that originally decide, decided size and decided definition so you have a ratio d of definition and you have a s fact that's itself dependent on the size so these are calculations done just to give you a good resolution you only need to change basically the definition to enhance or reduce that definition the gyroid uh, let's say uh, nodes generated nodes for the mesh are inside this mesh grid and it's defined by minus a to a value which is like the minus pi plus pi which creates the mesh grid and the equation is inside the object is generated as an object in, in matlab it is cosine x again divided by this conversion factor so cosine x sine y cosine y sine z cosine z sine x that's the whole trip through the equation and instead of having equal the zero in this case it's a plus zero so the object itself is the equation with the zero moved to the side of the equation obviously i have the here plus zero which doesn't make a difference in this case but later on if you need to use a uh, constant values so any t values then we can replace the zero with a constant or we can later decide on that value of a constant 
and remove it or add it so you'll have a plus minus value here at the end so without uh, going too much into that because we'll come back to this t value for now i will comment it out of the equation we only have the zero at the end and we have this object equals the object so no changes here and when you have this surface inside the cube uh, we use this isosurface function to connect the surfaces to have a complete uh, final surface rather than just nodes of the grid and we use this other isocap function to close the top bottom side left front and back of the cube uh, where the surface touches the boundary so this allows you to create a volume of a geroid if you don't use those functions you just have a distribution of nodes in 3d space so this closes it into the surface inside the cube and this closes it into the surfaces on the sides or on the faces of the cube. And at the end, you combine those to have a final volume. So it's the internal surfaces with the side surfaces to finally have a complete final volume V3, which is a combination of both. And the final step is to visualize what you generated. So this is the visualization step using the ppatch function and in there you can show the vertices the faces uh, choose a color in this case i'm choosing red and you have other features related to light quality shadows and all that rendering and it is a tree it's going to be a 3d view that's why view 3 this is the definition of the view type the last function that's for now commented out is the function that saves the the generated mesh into stl format in a selected location so this uses a a MATLAB function called stlwrite that will save your file in this location uh, in, my, in this case I wrote in the location where I have my files and at the end here you give the file name in this case uh, I'm calling this a g1 the first zero that I'm making with the t values that I'll be choosing a bit later and it's important here to define the file type so it's .stl and it's it's the file based on the f3 v3 which are the final surfaces and volumes of this generated jar it's important to note that SDL is a code you have to download and place it in the same folder where you have your code. So where you have your original gyro generation code. And this you can find online on the MATLAB uh, forums and can download it, place it on the same location and it's ready to run. It's also noted here at the beginning that you should not forget to have SDL write uh, plugin ready and placed into the same folder. Um, that will automatically help your file run you can also place it in the add-ons for for matlab as, a, as an alternative resource location so uh, now that i have this commented out we will only be able to see the generated gyroid not yet uh, save it as stl so i'll just run the code and this will pop will have a, a, a screen pop and that will show me the generated volume for those who are more familiar with the gyroid, uh, having the equation equals zero, so this sine cosine equation equals zero, will split the volume of a cube into two equal volumes. In red is the gyroid, that's 50% of the volume, and the empty space remaining is the other 50% of the volume. There is an equation uh, based on which if you change the T value, you can approximate the volume you're getting uh, so going from 50 percent you can go to 20 10 5 percent or go up to 70 80 percent and there's an approximation equation i'll be posting in the, in the description of this video now i got the gyroids uh, this type of gyroid that is based on only one equation is the, described as a network gyroid there's a second type very known very common and you've seen it a lot on different platforms it's called the sheet based gyroid and the sheet gyroid is actually defined by having uh, here instead of a zero uh, or instead of a one constant you need two equations with two constants so there will be an equation equals a positive value usually zero one and another equation negative value zero two so i already prepared that into the code so you can easily generate it and to put that in that's why we get back to the t value here I'm doing a forward shift of 0, 0.5 and a, a backward shift of 0, 0.5 also. And that means the object I'm generating, which is the, the nodes distribution of this gyroid, I will remove this constant value from it. So that will be this equation minus t. That's why there's a minus t. And then again, this equation plus t. So this is the, the way I can have two gyroids and the same uh, two surface of gyros in the same volume. 
and then I can use again those features to combine them into a final central volume of the cube. I won't talk much more, I'll just generate it to show you how that would look like. Again, click start and that will give me that will give me a window popping out. And this shows you a sheet-based gyroid instead of a network-based. And in this case, you have uh, empty space on the left side and empty space on the right side of the gyroid. And these two spaces, they never touch. So this kind of a, a sheet-based gyroid is commonly used as a heat exchanger where you have a hot liquid coming this side and a cold liquid coming the other side. So this is a common heat exchanger. Now you can see here a bit of the mesh quality, those triangulations those small surface meshes and this is obviously based uh, on the definition so I, as I mentioned I will reduce the definition a bit uh, to an extreme value just to show you how bad it can get so instead of using 40 I'm gonna go with 10 this is very low quality and this will give you a result that looks like this basically you can easily see there's a much much reduced quality in the surface much reduced definition However, this is like a very low uh, file, very light file. It could be useful for some large meshes or large arrays of gyroid if you want your files to remain controllable and light. Uh, obviously, this is not useful if you want to print one large gyroid with a very nice smooth surface. In that case, you will be shifting the definition to much, much higher values. The values I have found most suitable for best results go up to 160. Uh, but they take much time to, to calculate. So now that I'm back to 40, I still have that uh, sheet uh, geroid and it is uh, generated by T05, so plus minus T05 plus T05. I'm gonna export it as the STL file and to the location where I'm saving my files and give it the name. So this is gonna be G1 T05 as an STL file. I only need to run the script, but this is now into the code, it's not commented out. And this will save the SDL file in my work location. So I was doing some tests before. Now I run this. I again get quickly the pop-up screen with the gyroid preview. But you also see here I got G1T05. So I have the file also generated and saved as SDL in location. Now that I have the STL, I'll move to MeshLab. And MeshLab is a very nice tool to improve the mesh quality. Uh, if you want to print the part, it's also helpful to make the file lighter and it will help to slice a bit better and faster. If you want to do simulations, it will help a lot to reduce the file size. So as I import it to MeshLab, I change the view here so you can start to see the triangles. You see on the flat surfaces, you have a lot of triangles that can easily be reduced without affecting the quality of the mesh. But also internally, you have a lot of those sharp angles, sharp triangles that are not helpful if you're doing any simulation work so before you even reduce the mesh or adjust the mesh first the step to do is you should always clean the stl file from any additional free nodes free vertices free surfaces or not touching surfaces disconnected surfaces to do that you should start by cleaning so compact the faces that will uh, remove any discontinuities uh, compact the vertices again so then we go to clean and repair again merge close vertices the default dimensions are recommended by the software so I won't need to make any changes to that and then I do remove duplicate faces that means if you have two faces in the exact same location so superposed and re remove duplicate vertices so now I did a very quick process to clean up the mesh to some extent and now is the important part where I do remeshing and I will go and use the quadratic edge collapse decimation. I've tried other remeshing algorithms and you see here there's plenty. Uh, this so far seems to be the best option I have to maintain the quality of the surface and reduce as much as possible the mesh density. So before we proceed, you can see here this is 141,000 faces and the code automatically suggests going to half. I never make those large jumps because they could introduce some errors themselves. So I go from 141,000 to 120,000. You have to turn all of these on, especially planar simplification. That allows you to reduce the triangles on the flat surfaces much more and preserve topology. And that will help preserve the shape, uh, the internal shape of the gyro and preserve normal that will maintain the normal the, the perpendiculars or the tangential surface to the surfaces. Uh, 
uh, and that means that the shape of the Jared is maintained as best as possible. Now I only need to click apply and that will start the reduction. You start to see some changes on the flat surfaces first and then when you start to go to lower numbers you start to see much more effect internally and it's always safe for with these gyros at least to go to 50,000 elements and this is where I usually stop uh, to get the quality I need to get rid of those sharp triangles uh, in internally and that will help me do my simulations as I'm doing simulation work I need to later convert to solid and do some meshing and that will reduce a lot the distortion in my mesh so I went down to 50,000 and you see all the sharp triangles are gone while the geometry of the gyroid is preserved so from here I just need to save so I'll go and export the mesh it's important to switch to STL and as I had the name of the file GT05 I will add to it 50k so I remember that this is the 50,000 faces version this is the reduced version that I can continue processing with and as soon as I save it will ask me which format I'm using the binary format this is the lightest uh, format of STL the best for usage and now you can see here in my files I have the, the G1 T05 50k I have my STL ready it was about 7 megabytes now it's about 2 megabytes the final step in this process is to convert the STL to a solid so we go to FreeCAD and in FreeCAD we start by opening the STL so we need the T0550K the one we just made load it in that's the STL you need to click that's important click on the name here and switch to part if it's it's usually on another uh, default option so you need to switch to part and then you go to part create shape from mesh that will start to convert the mesh to surfaces it might take some time so at the end you see here there's a surface generated and you still need to convert the surface into a solid so again you go to part convert to solid and that would you have to always select before you give the order so select the new uh, surfaces and then use the function of convert to solid now again wait and at the end of the process we have a solid body generated and now we just need to export it as a stp uh, you can most commonly for CAD software you could export as stp you could export as IGS, but for uh, what I'm doing or what I'm using it for, mostly some manipulation now because I usually prefer to export as SAT if the option is available. And uh, from there, you can manipulate it as any CAD file, do whatever you need to do to continue on your work. I hope this was helpful and useful to all of you. And if you have any comments or questions, you can um, put them down in the comment section. And I could be making more of those tutorials of generating gyrods. Most probably the next one is going to be using Rhino software. Thank you for watching. So if you like this video, uh, press like. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer, happy to help. The MATLAB's code is in the, in the description of this video. And I'll be adding some more tips later on in the comment section.